I want us to read the book of Numbers, chapter 12. Maybe we can read from verse 1. Numbers, chapter 12. Let's read Numbers chapter 12 from verse 1. It says, The complaint of Miriam and Aaron, while they were at Hazaroth, Miriam and Aaron criticized Moses because he had married a Cushite woman. Verse 2 it says, They said, Has the Lord spoken only through Moses? Hasn't he spoken through us too? But the Lord had them. Verse 3 says, Now Moses was very humble, more humble than any other person on earth. So immediately the Lord called to Moses, Aaron and Miriam, and said, Go out to the tabernacle, all three of you. So the three of them went to the tabernacle. Then the Lord descended in the pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tabernacle. Aaron and Miriam he called and they stepped forward. Verse 6, and the Lord said to them, now listen to what I say. If there were prophets among you, I, the Lord, will reveal myself in visions. I will speak to them in dreams but not with my servant Moses. All of my house, he is the one I trust. I speak to him face to face, clearly, and not in wrinkles. He sees the Lord as he is. So why were you not afraid to criticize my servant Moses? The Lord was very angry with them, and he departed. Verse 10. And the cloud moved from above the tabernacle. There stood Miriam, her skin as white as snow from leprosy. When Aaron saw what had happened to her, he cried out to Moses. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your weight. Is light, is life, is wisdom and knowledge to us in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk about the topic called humidity. Or humbleness. I remember this the topic that I was also using on Sunday when I preached in Petrative, also in, in Dallas. So I want us to repeat it. Where we are reading, we are hearing the story of three siblings. Number one is Moses, two, Aaron, three is Miriam. The Bible shows that Moses one day wanted to marry, or his time of marriage had come. So he had to choose whom he wanted or whom he wants to marry. So God said to him, he must not marry in Ethiopia or in Cush because those people were not worshiping God. So the concern of God was if he had to take a step of marrying one of the Cushite women, his problem will be idolatry, meaning he will end up worshiping idols. So if he marries someone wrong, his problem will be like the problem of many of us today, whereby we'll be moved from the focus of God and we start to focus on wrong stuff. So the Bible says, God did not want him to marry anyone from Cush or from Ethiopia. So that also, Aaron and Miriam, they consent to it to say, it is true that our brother is not supposed to marry a woman of this nation. But when they are now, you know, entering in the issues of Moses, the Bible shows that God was angry with them. So I had a question when I was reading this to say, God is the one who said Moses must not marry this woman. But now Miriam, who is the sister to Moses, and Aaron, the brother, they are also agreeing with God to say, it is wrong for Moses to marry this woman. But now God is angry with them. So my question was that, 
Why are now these people of God to be punished after they agree with God? And I realized that the reason was no one is supposed to help God. Hallelujah. The moment you involve yourself in the things of God wrongly, God will, will not agree with you. You'll get punishment. So when you read verse 3, it says, Now Moses was very humble, and more humble than any other person upon the face of the earth. And it shows that the humility of Moses could not be compared to the humility of anyone on this earth. So Moses was the most humble man upon the face of the earth. So God says, with Moses, when I speak or when I want to talk with him, I come with him, we talk face to face. I don't use riddles, I don't use dreams and visions. I talk with Moses because he's humble face to face. Ask someone and say, my friend, are you humble? So, because if you are humble, it means you are supposed to attract the presence of God in your life. You cannot say you are humble and you are still struggling with some other issues. Because Moses, the way he was so humble, God recognized his humility. He said, because he's so humble and there's no one like him, I'm going to give him grace that when I want to talk with him, I won't visit him in dreams, but I'll come to him face to face hallelujah i don't know if if it makes sense so M moses was the man if you remember who killed you know an egyptian one day but god could not even count that sin god still said moses is the most humble man so when you read the book of philippians 2 verse 5 philippians chapter 2 verse 5 from verse 5, it says, You must have the same attitude that Jesus Christ had. Through, though he was God, he did not think of equally with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being when he appeared in the woman form. So I'm reading Amplified. I want us to read the same verse in King James or New King James Version. Philippians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Let's read it from verse 5 again. It says, Let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. Tell someone and say, my friend, let this mind of Christ be in you. The mind of Christ was the humble mind. So the Bible said, let the mind of Christ be in you. Though he was God, but he never considered himself as God, but he humbled himself. And the Bible says, like a human being, like a bond servant, he never even wanted to think about the glory that he knew he left in heaven. So because of humility, he humbled himself. The Bible said he humbled himself to the death, even to the death of the cross. And by doing so, there's something special that happened to Jesus. If we can read further. Let's read verse 7. It says, but God himself, but he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of men. Verse 8, it says, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the death or to the point of death. Here, the Bible shows us that if you are humble, you must also be obedient. We cannot say you are humble while you are disobedient. So, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to his father to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Verse 9, it says, Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. This verse, verse 9, normally is quoted by every Christian or every preacher. But if we look where it comes from, it comes from the humility of Jesus. Jesus was not just exalted and lifted by God for nothing. There's something he did. 
he humbled himself even to the death of the cross. Now the Bible said God saw that obedience, saw that action, saw that activity, saw that character in Jesus. This is the reason why God exalted him. The Bible said he exalted him and gave him a special name, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the name of Jesus, if you read scriptures very well, you'll find that is the name of God. So God gave, he took his name and gave it to his son Jesus after he saw the humility of his son. Hallelujah. Do I make sense? So when he was humbling himself, Jesus did not also know that he will be given the name that is powerful above every other name. He was just being obedient, obeying scriptures, obeying his father, obeying what God is telling him. So when he was carrying on doing that, God was looking at that activity and God was pleased in his heart. Ask someone and say, are you pleasing God in your heart or not? Because sometimes whatever we do, more especially in the church, you find that we do everything to please people and God is not even seeing our actions. So here Jesus, whatever he was doing, he was making sure that he pleases his father. And when the father was happy with him, he gave him a special name. And after giving him the special name, he exalted that name. That every other name that can be mentioned must still be lower than the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So if you want to be known and you want to be recognized, especially by God, humble yourself. Tell somebody, say, my friend, you are too high. Go down so that God can work. Tell someone again and say, my friend, you are too high. Go down. Because God wants to work in your life. God cannot work if we are high. We have to be low so that himself, God, can come to our rescue and raise us. You know, there are people who raise themselves. That's why there's too much failure, too much competition. Disappointment. Why? Because we raise ourselves. And, and there's a point whereby God must come in to humble you. And it's a painful thing to be humbled by God. It's better if we humble ourselves and himself, he will exalt us. I don't know if I make sense. Say amen if you understand. Amen. Tell somebody and say, my friend, humble yourself. Go down. You are too high. And you are disturbing God. Sometimes we disturb God by our actions, especially pride. So when you read the book of Proverbs 6:16, 6, it says there are six sins that God hates. And the seventh one is when God does not even tolerate. The first one is pride, proud look. So the book of 1 John is talking about what is on this earth is proud of life, lust of the flesh. Hallelujah. So if there's pride, you are disturbing God to work. In fact, you are disturbing also Holy Spirit. You are also disturbing yourself. You are delaying yourself. But if there's humility, Holy Spirit can flow. Tell someone and say, my friend, you are too high. Go down. Tell that person again, go down. You are too high. James 4, 6 to 10. James. Do you find it? James chapter 4, verse 6 to 10. Let's read it. It says, But he gives more grace, therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Ask someone and say, what do you want here today? And the person will say, you want what? I want grace. If you want grace, the Bible said God gives grace to the humble. It's something that you must not ask for or pray for. You can attract grace if you are humble. Hallelujah. I don't know if I make sense. Let me read this verse again. But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So when you are humble, you are attracting the grace of God. And what is grace? According to Titus 2.11, the Bible says, grace is the unmerited favor 
that help us to say no to ungodliness and say yes to godliness. And that grace, the Bible said, it has been appeared to us. So if the grace has appeared, so it's up to you to get it. Because it does not mean that if it has appeared, you can automatically get it. You have to take a step of getting that grace. Tell someone and say, my friend, grace is abundant. So it's up to you to get it. And for you to get it, it's when you are humble. The Bible said, God gives grace to the humble. When you go down, you attract the grace of God. Meaning nothing shall be impossible with, with whatever you do in Jesus' name. So the moment you attract the grace because of humility, nothing will be impossible in your life. Whatever door that is closed will open automatically because you have the grace. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. Let's read it. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. It says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things, says he who is holy, who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. Let's read together verse 8, all of us. One, two, three. Let's read. I know your works. See, I have set before you a what? A closed door. Eh? The what? The shut door. I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength. Uh, let, let's stop there. L let me explain what this verse is saying. Verse 7, all of us we know. Is the one who opens, no one can close. Is the one who closes, no one can open. But verse 8, it says, Behold, in front of you, I have opened a door, and no one can shut it. Tell someone and say, my friend, from now on, nothing shall be impossible with me. Because there's a door in front of me that no one can close because of the grace. Because I'm humble. Here, the Bible shows us that there is a door that God has opened. I want to relax and try to explain this. There, there are many doors that maybe Satan has tried to close. But this one, the Bible said, the door has been opened. And verse 7 says, the one who opens and no one can close it. So now that door is open, and that person who opened the door has the key of Israel, has the key of David. Meaning, the moment he opens that door, he locks it there at the opened, you know, side, and he goes away with the key. Meaning, when you want to enter through that door, don't expect the closure of the door. You can go in and out without any argument or any trouble. Tell somebody, say, my friend, nothing shall be impossible. This is the assurity that when we are humble and we attract the grace, nothing shall be impossible. Why? There is a door in front of us. Not that the back or on the side. Where you are supposed to go, there is a door already open. I don't know if you are hearing. Where you are supposed to go, there is a door open already. So it's up to you to enter through that door. And you take what belongs to you. Today we are going to pray a simple prayer. Lord, make me humble and I want to take what belongs to me. Hallelujah. I want to read this verse again. And I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. And no one can shut it. For you have a little strength. You know? The Bible said we have little strength, meaning there are doors that we cannot open with our own strength because maybe the door is too hard to open. So Jesus promised that the door is open because you have little strength, so I will open for you. In fact, I have opened that door for you because you have little strength. So Jesus knows your weakness. That's why he will open doors for you. As long as you are humble, you don't have to work hard. 
You know, there are words that my man likes to say. She loves to say, if you want to see God working in your life, become stupid of God. She loves to say, do even if you don't understand. If you are stupid of God means you obey even though you do not understand why it's done that way. You become stupid of God so that the wisdom can be, can be produced from you. So when you are becoming stupid of God, there's a wisdom that God will give you and everyone will see. I was reading the book of Matthew chapter 6 where Jesus was addressing prayer. He said, when you pray, you must humble yourself and don't pray where people will see you. He said, go to the closet and lock yourself in there. In the secret, when you pray, pray, carry on pray in the secret. Humbling yourself, not before men, but before God. And it says, when you pray like that, there is one who sits in the secret and is going to reward you openly. I don't know if that makes sense. So whatever you do, it means there is someone who has the right to correct and mark. Whatever you do, there is someone who is saying, here you are right, here you are wrong. Remember, scriptures are totally telling us about, I mean, you know, I please us. We must not serve God because of eyes. So whatever you do, you must not do anything because people must recognize or applaud you. Whatever you do in the house of God or serving God, you must do it for God himself. Because the one who sees in the secret wants to reward you openly. Now, if we want to be rewarded openly, there's a secret. There's a secret place which is called a closet where we have to go and humble ourselves. So normally what we do is we want to do things for people to see and recognize. That is why we don't have results. The reason why we don't have results is because we do things for people and we want people to reward us. The moment we have reward from people, there's no reward from the Father. So if we want a reward from the Father, we must humble ourselves, we go to the closet, and it's the one who will reward us openly, and people will see that we serve Almighty God. Hallelujah. This verse, I want to read it again. It says, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. I wish we can only talk about this verse with close. See, you know, the Bible says see. It means there's someone who does not see. See this door. Hallelujah. See, see. Tell somebody and say, see. The door is open. And you are still this side complaining. See, see. Tell the person again and say, hey, see, see. The door is open. Enter there. Hallelujah. See, the door is up in front. You know, I wish here Bible can tell us how far is the door. But the way it, it is explaining, I think is clear. In front, in front. Not I here, here, in front. In front here, the door is open. In front of you, there's a door open. In front of you, there's a door open there. There's a door open in front of you. See it. See that door. Ask someone and say, are you seeing this door? And the answer is, I'm not seeing it. So when you go back to the book of Genesis, talking about the humble man also, who was righteous. Noah, the Bible said by his time, people were marrying enjoying having feasts, having parties, and he was busy obeying, humbling himself, doing what God told him to do, building an ark, and others were laughing at him. So from the first day when the rain started to fall, people were expecting to say, it means this year is going to be a very big harvest because it is raining. So by when now they start to see the ark, rising with the water, they were starting to worry 
I believe others were running to the ark for him to help them to carry them inside. And little did they know that the key has been taken by God. And the key is in heaven. Hallelujah. So it means if you wanted to enter into the ark, you must first go to God and ask for the key and come and open. So even now, you find that there are doors opened, but we don't see them. That's what the Bible says, see this door. Tell three people and say, my friend, see the door. Three, see the door. See this door. I don't want to talk about more spiritual because if we talk about spiritual doors, we never understand. See, this door is open. It can be a door of business, door of breakthrough, door of finance, door. See this door. See it. Are you seeing it? Ah, you are lying. Are you seeing this door? Say amen if you are seeing it. Proverbs 22.4. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4. Let's read. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Let's read again. By humility and the fear of the Lord, they are what? Riches, they are honors, or honor and this life. As somebody said, do you want to be rich? And the answer is, humble yourself. If you want to be rich, humble yourself. The Bible said, in humility, there are riches, not one richness, but riches. Means you can't count them. They are un uncountable. You cannot count and finish them. There are riches in humility. They are what? And honor and life. So if you want to be honored and you want long life, you want riches. The secret is in humility. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God and he will raise you by the due time. The problem is we want to be raised tomorrow and today because we want to show people that we are powerful and it's not necessary. It is very much important to wait upon the Lord until he raises you. The Bible said by due time, meaning by the time and the season of God, Remember, God does not go by our own times, but he always go by his seasons. So if we relax in the Lord, God is the one who will raise us by due time. Tell somebody, say, my friend, there are riches in humility. You know, I was reading this chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Yes, I'm sorry to give you so many scriptures. Chapter 8. I was very much concerned to say, why is it happening like this? Verse 2, it says, And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way this 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you. Are you seeing that verse? To know what was in your heart, whether you, could, you will keep his commandments or not. Verse 3, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know. Hallelujah. So here, it was the explanation why God delayed Israelites. The journey that could take them to reach Canaan, maybe it will take one week or two days or three days. So it took them 40 good years. And now the reason is, the Bible says, God, number one, was humbling them. Number two, he wanted to see what is in their hearts. Ask someone to say, what is in your heart? If there's humility, you will have profit today in Jesus' name. So he said, he humbled you. And he delayed you so that you can produce what is in your heart. Whether you shall be able to keep his commandments or not. So he, verse 3 says, he humbled you and allowed you to hunger. Yeah, I'm satisfied. He, he humbled you and allowed you to, to what? 
to hunger. And when you are hungry, he brought manna that you didn't even know. And your forefathers did not know this manna. Amen. The reason why I say I'm, I'm satisfied is because sometimes when we are hungry, we are suffering, we are struggling, there are things we need in life we don't reach, we don't get them. We start to complain thinking maybe it's a demon or a satan. So I think this verse is answering those questions. He humbled me, allowed me to hang so that he can feed me. You know, I think here God wanted to prove himself to say, in fact, you Israelites, you trust so much in yourselves and you also trust that Pharaoh too much that you forgot that I'm the God and I'm the one who called you by my name. So now when he said, I'm humbling you, he said, I also wanted you to hunger so that I can provide and you forget all this meat you, you used to eat when you are in, in Egypt. You know, there are some meat that people can give you, you find that it's, it's an old meat, that the meat is being cooked nicely, they put spices, but the meat is rotten. So here God was saying, the reason why I wanted you to hunger is because I wanted you to produce what is in your heart. And I wanted to see if you will, you will produce the right thing. I wanted to check your heart. Tell somebody, say, my friend, God is checking your heart today. God, God is checking our hearts today. God is checking our, I'm telling you, God is checking our hearts. Because, you know, if you remember what Jesus was saying about the heart, he said, what is coming out of the heart is malice, is adultery, fornication, and all sorts of stuff. So, it's when they blamed him, when they saw his disciples eating without washing hands. So they say, Jesus, we have a problem. Your disciples are breaking the law of the elders. So they start to eat without washing hands. So Jesus was saying, but is there anything wrong? They said, yes. The wrong thing is, we know everyone, everyone everywhere, before you start to eat, you must make sure that your hands are clean. Jesus said, those are the traditions of your elders, but it's not the law of God. The problem is you are living the law of God and holding on to your own traditions. So Jesus said, it's not what you eat with your hands that will make you dirty, but what comes from the heart. What comes from the heart is the one that makes you dirty. Your heart is full of anger. Your heart is proud. Your heart is full of malice. Your heart full of covetousness. Tell somebody saying, check your heart. Because God wants to know what is in your heart. That's why it's humbling you. You know, sometimes you can pray and fast and cry to God, Lord, I want this place. I want that. You find out God saying, no, 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 not now. Why? Because I still want to humble you. I still want to see what is in your heart. I still want to make sure that my command is in your heart. Because if you, you get that miracle fast, you find that there's pride now and you will fail to worship God. You will think maybe it's your ability, it's your intelligence, it's your knowledge that bring that place. So now God said to, to Israelites, no, I humbled you. When I took you all this long road through the wilderness, I was humbling you. Number two, I wanted to see what is in your heart. I, I love it. Ask somebody and say, what is in your heart? And then the person is saying, what? It's anger. Worries. It's what? Adultery. Lust. So God wants to know what is in your heart. In fact, it does not mean that God does not know what is in your heart. He wants you now to, to show the actions of what is in your heart so that people can see what you carry in their heart. You know, sometimes, you know, we come to church carrying the heavy heart. And we, we claim that we are Christians, we worship God, we are going to heaven. So, but the moment problem comes, or the moment someone starts to insult you, you start to show what is in your heart. Hallelujah. So God wants you to show what is in your heart so that people can know what kind of person are you, whether you are keeping his command or not. When you are hungry, what are you saying? You end up asking from neighbors you end up going to the street to ask and that's what god wanted to see 
Because God wants to see what is in your heart. Ask three people, my friend, what is in your heart? What is it? Three people. How do you ask three people when you are sitting? Ask three people, what is in your heart? Because God is concerned about your heart. What is in your heart? Ask someone again, what is in your heart? What is in your heart? I think our hearts are very much important before the living God. Hallelujah. He humbled you and he allowed you to hang. Ask somebody and say, are you not hungry? What, what did you eat? If you are hungry, you don't have food, thank God. Maybe it's the will of God in your life. Because God is trying to check what will happen after this hunger. Because God wants to feed you. You know, sometimes we are, we are full. Our stomachs are full because of wrong things. Wrong food. Evil food that we also eat in the dreams. So God wants to clean that stomach so that he can feed you. And when you are fed by God, that, that, that flow will never stop. That flow will never stop in Jesus' name. Amen. Prophet Elijah is a practical example of, of what God was doing. One day, the Bible shows that he was staying at the mountain in the cliff. So he, the water he was getting was from a brook. So after he proclaimed that there will be famine everywhere, even that brook that he was trusting that he was getting water from, the Bible shows that it also dried up and he did not have food. So God had to send birds to feed him, to humble him. Remember, Elijah is someone who was running away from the will of God. So God wanted to humble this man. He said, you know what? What you must do is you must not stay with people. You must stay in the mountains, in the wilderness, like what happened to John the Baptist. So when he was staying there, one day God said to him, you know what? No more food for you. And the person who is going to give you food does not even work. She does not even have anything. But to humble you, go to that person. That person is in Sidon. In Zerubbabel, the Bible said he took a journey to go to Sidon. The moment he reached the gates of Sidon, she found a woman who was a widower. She was trying to collect some sticks. I mean, collecting sticks, it shows that the woman was really poor because she was supposed maybe to switch the stove on in the house. So it means she has to first collect sticks to make fire and start to cook. Hallelujah. So she's collecting sticks so that she can go and make fire. So Elijah came and said, what, what are you doing here? She said, no, I'm just trying to get these sticks so that I can cook. And I have small flour in my house. And that flour is only enough for me and for my son. So the man of God said to him, no, you know what you must do? Go and prepare everything. Cook. But the first person who is supposed to eat is me. And the Bible shows that the woman was so confused to say, how can I take the last meal for my son and for myself and give it to this man who is a stranger? And, but he first said he must give him a water. So when she was running for water, Elijah said, no, 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 stop. Bring something for me to eat. So when she was preparing that, grumbling to say, but what kind of a man is this who does not even think for the baby? In, in fact, if he was talking about cook for the boy, then it would be better. But he said, we must, I must feed him. Hallelujah. And, and Elijah was also concerned because, I mean, this woman is not working. The husband who was taking care of her died. So there's no more provision. And Elijah said, okay, give me, give me. And when he was eating, he did not even leave, I mean, small piece for the boy. He ate everything. When the man of God now is full, that's when he had to speak a word. And the word came to pass. Hallelujah. So the food we eat, we must check them. Because there might be food that disturbs the will of God in our lives. Sometimes when you are eating, you must ask yourself, where did I get this food? But because I must hunger so that God can feed me. This food must come from the Lord, not from everywhere. Because food from everywhere can also stop the visions of God in your dreams. I don't know if you are hearing me. And the man of God, the Bible said, after he ate, now... He spoke a word, and the word came to pass. Remember, Elijah is someone 
who will speak things that must come to pass. You will like it or not. If it's Elijah who can just speak, whatever he said, even if you don't love him, you will see what he's speaking about. Hallelujah. I want to speak life and abundance in your life today in Jesus' name. Whatever you want, you might be hungry. Listen to me. Maybe God was checking your heart to see whether you will keep his command or not. Now there shall be abundance in your house in Jesus' name. If you just obeyed the Lord, the Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 8, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of Almighty God. So when you are facing hunger, maybe it's the will of God, the prayer that we are supposed to pray is, thank you, Lord, and let your will be done. Remember what happened to Jesus when he was in Gethsemane. The Bible says he felt an agony. So when he was feeling the pressure, he ended up praying to say, Lord, let this cup of suffering pass from me. From there, he said, no, 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 but I came for this cup. He said, Lord, let your will be done. And that's how Jesus now was given to soldiers by Judas Iscariot, and he was killed. So after he prayed the prayer, the Bible said he was strengthened again. So the book of Matthew 4, when Jesus was tempted by Satan, the Bible said after all these three temptations, he stood his ground, and the angels came and strengthened him because of his humility. I'm seeing angels coming to strengthen you in Jesus' name. You shall never feel weak again in Jesus' name. That weakness, God is bringing angels to minister to you in Jesus' mighty name. I, I'm hearing financial breakthrough. Financial, receive it in Jesus' name. I, I'm hearing finance, finances, finances. Fin if you need those finances, I take it three times. One. Two, three. Your cup will never run dry again in Jesus' mighty name. You just have to humble yourself. You go down. You obey what you have been taught. Hallelujah. When you do that, God will show up. God will show. If you understood what I was reading here, this Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, it says, God humbled Israelites. And he, he allowed them to hunger so that he can feed them. All the suffering that you faced, it was good because it was separating you from wrong people so that God can feed you. So you shall be, you shall be fed by God in Jesus' name. And when God is feeding you, I mean, it shall never run dry in the name of Jesus. I don't know if you are hearing me. People promised you jobs, but they never gave you that job. People promise you marriages, they never came. So you were waiting for this time. Where is God who shall show up and provide in Jesus' name? Amen. So when it's God working in your life, it can look like it's gloomy. It can look like it's dark. But there's a door open right there when you, you are seeing something like darkness. Don't worry. They say door open there. You must just take two steps. Tell somebody, say, my friend. I'm taking two steps forward. And as I'm taking two steps forward, I will be able to see this door. Sometimes the problem is we are sitting at one place and we are enjoying to be in that comfort zone. Tell someone, I say, get out of that comfort zone. And take two steps ahead and see what God has done already. Mark 11, 24, the Bible said when we pray, we must also know that it is done. It's not, it's not going to do it. It's, also, it's already done. So when, when you take two steps, it means you are showing faith and believing that it's true what the Bible is telling me. It is already done. Let me take two steps. Tell somebody, say, my friend, I'm taking two steps and, and I will see this door open in front of me and I will take what belongs to me. If you understand, shout hallelujah. So you were humbled by God so that God himself should be the one who must feed you. As long as you are being promised by people. You know, people are, are full of promises. 
but empty promises. So God, the Bible said the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So whatever he promised to do, he will do it. He's going to do it today for you in Jesus' name. I'm seeing people who are blind. God will open their eyes in Jesus' name. Amen. The right ear is blood. God is opening that right ear now in Jesus' name. Amen. If it's God who heals you, you will be healed and there's no more sickness in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Do not seek things from people because people will promise and they cannot fulfill their promises. From now on, Seek anything you want from the living God because his promises are yes and amen and he cannot change. The Bible said he's not the son of man who changes his mind and his gifts are without repentance. So when he said, I will do it, he will do it for you. He cannot change. People will promise and change and give you reasons and excuses. Sorry I was late and sorry I was... But when God says, I'm coming at 11 o'clock, you are going to find him there if you are late and God will do it for you. There's no more failure. There's no more failure in your life. No more failure in your life. No more failure in your life. No more failure. No more failure. No more failure. Tell four people and say, my friend, I shall never fail again. I shall never fail again. God is on my side. I will do my part so that he can do his part. And my part is humility. You know, humble people, they, they love to be quiet because they don't, they don't want to prove a point and they don't want to speak for themselves because they understand this God they trust, that he's the one who must speak for them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tell three people again now and say, my friend, I will never lack anything from now on. I will do my part, and he's going to do his part. I will humble myself, and he will show up. Colossians 2.18. Colossians 2.18. Two, Let no one cheat you of your reward taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Here we are hearing them. They are, though there is humility, but there is also false humility, whereby people proud themselves and also to try to say they are the ones who are able and they are worshiping angels. They are worshiping the creatures of God. So the Bible said, we must not be like them. We must not be like them. Meaning, we must not be fake. We must not be wrong imitators. When we say we humble ourselves, we must mean it with all of our hearts. Because this wrong humility here leads to destruction. Hallelujah. When... Jesus was addressing about two roads, one going to destruction and one going to life. He said, you enter through a narrow gate. He said, but that road to eternal life is difficult. And the road to destruction is wide. Even the gate is big and beautiful. He said, but don't be fooled by your eyes enter through a narrow gate. It's a command. The command is enter through a narrow gate. Humble yourself. You know what it, what it, is, it means? It means when the gate is narrow, don't, don't check your size and check the size of the gate. You can enter. Enter through there and you'll see what will happen. So he said, but remember, that road to life is not easy. It's difficult. And the reason why it's difficult is because you must be discouraged to think what you are going through is not a normal thing. But that Deuteronomy 8 verse 3, it says, God allow that difficulty to humble you, to, for you to be hungry. Hallelujah. When you are hungry, 
Matthew 5, 5 is talking about those who are hungry for righteousness and those who, are hung, those who are thirsty for righteousness, they shall be filled. The reason why you are not filled is because you are not hungry. Ask somebody and say, are you hungry today? If you can hunger, God will come and feed you and you shall be fulfilled. You shall be full. And hunger will never come close to you again. Hallelujah. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So the moment we are hungry for God, God will come to the point of our need in Jesus' name. Let me tell you something. In fact, I want to tell you what I'm hearing. Too much of breakthrough is for people who are humble. Let me repeat myself. If you want God to lift you, go down. Go why? Down. Because if you are too high, there's no more room for you to rise because you have reached the ceiling. So if there is any kind of elevation, there's no more room for it because you have reached the, the ceiling. But if you humble yourself, there's always enough room for you to be lifted. So you must allow God to lift you by showing humility. Are you hearing what I'm saying? From now on, what you do is, I humble myself, and I'll be able to be lifted. So the book of 1 Peter is talking about 5.5. 5. It says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and resist the devil, and the devil will flee. That verse tells us that if we say we are able to resist Satan, to show him where he must go, on our own selves, we will fail. And the only way for us to show certain where he belongs is only when we are humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And when you are humbling yourself like that, the Bible said, you will resist him and he will flee. You know what is fleeing? Is to fly, fly away with a high speed. And possibility is he will fail. He can take time for you to come back to you. But if you still have pride and sometimes you doubt, you fail to humble yourself, you, you will cast him. He will just jump over to that side and still jump back. But if you humble yourself, the Bible says you will resist him and he will flee. Hallelujah. So if you want him to go, humble yourself. You know, humility it's one of, of the fruits of the Spirit. That is written in the book of Galatians 5. You read it from verse 22. When we don't humble ourselves, it means we say we are able on our own. Meaning we don't need the help of God. But if we humble ourselves, we are totally depending on Him entirely. We are surrendering our will to Him. And he will come at the point of need. Meaning your life now will entirely be the life of Jesus. Remember that verse that we started with. It says that Philippians, take this mind of Jesus. Take the mind of Christ. Jesus knew himself that he is the son. He is the son of the living God. And Jesus knew the glory that is waiting for him. But he decided to agree to be humiliated. You know, sometimes, if we can think about what happened to Jesus, we cannot even play church. We cannot look back anymore. Jesus knew exactly what is happening on earth. And he knew what is happening in heaven. But he said, I'm going to take the portion of humility, the portion of a servant, of a slave, so that I shame Satan and I must take the key of life. And for me to do that, it's, where I, it's when I can be able to be humble and go into the ground 
and go to a place where no one can reach and take life. That's why the Bible said our lives are hidden in Christ Jesus above. So Jesus had to come and restore everything through his body, through his pains. So when he was carrying all these pains, all he was thinking about was you and me. And he said, I'm not con going to consider myself here. I'm going to consider the generations that must be born after my death, which is salvation. So when he considered all those people like us today, we still talk about him. Jesus had the right to say, Father, please, this is painful. I can't take it anymore. But he said, but if I give up now, it means I must not blame anyone who will give up in future. So if you give up, Jesus has the right, has the right to blame you to say, how do you give up if you are facing maybe unemployment, maybe divorce? Jesus faced all. And he said, I'm going to humble myself until there's victory. The Bible said, God took him and put him on his right hand side after lifting him and took all his enemies under his feet. Sometimes God cannot fight for us because we, we are too high and we think we can do it on our own. Do you know that even prayer can make you to be proud? You find that you are failing to humble yourself. Maybe you see your, your pastor praying for five minutes and you are able to pray 20 hours. You end up undermining the leader. You think you are better because you can pray too much. L let me tell you something. You will never be better than the teacher or the master. That's, Jesus, that's what Jesus said. He said, when he was addressing his disciples, after they came back rejoicing, when they saw demons, you know, subjecting themselves to, to them, he said, no, what makes you happy today is not what I taught you. When I was teaching you, I was teaching you about the things of the kingdom of God, not about the things of the kingdom of this world. If you are happy that you saw a demon surrendering, it's not enough because there is a time of your death whereby God will never ask you how many demons you casted, but he's going to ask you how many times you humbled yourself. And you find that you are failing. You, you are failing to answer. You say, no, demons, they know me. When I enter, they run away. Okay. Maybe it's because of the grace for you to cast that particular demon just to help people. But you find that your name is not written in the book of life. What is needed is you humble yourself. Tell someone again, humble yourself. You are too high. When you are high, I'm repeating before I close. You have already reached the top line where there's no more room for you to go through or to rise above that line. So there's no more room for you to be lifted. But if you humble yourself, there's enough room for you to rise and rise and rise. What, what, what did is doing in, in his church here is he prays for his sons, his daughters, to be lifted by God. And always he will say, I want God to use my children more than he did for me. Do you remember his, his statement? Always he will say, I want my children to be used by God more than me. So sometimes I'll be asking myself, why man of God is speaking like this? I realize that he's a humble man. Because always he wants someone better than him. Not because he's tired of his job, but he has seen what God can do when you are humble. So if we really need God to work in our lives, please, let's go down. Just go, tell somebody and say, go down. God. Down, 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 down. Sometimes jealousy can creep in when you feel like you are humble. You must not feel it. You must just go down again. Don't feel it. 
If you feel it, it means you, you are proud. You are seeing that you are, you are humble. Don't feel it. Go down. Hallelujah. So if the great men of God, like our father, who can say, I want people who can be raised more than me. Okay, let me tell you something that maybe you don't know about, about him. I'm not trying to praise him, but it's my father. I have the right also to praise him. I'm standing on his pulpit. Remember, something that my, maybe you might not be aware of is, remember, that is not, it's not a pastor, it's not a prophet, it's not an evangelist, it's an apostle. And the Bible said in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it's talking about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Do you know the verse? Daddy has all nine gifts. All of them. So if someone who has nine gifts of the Spirit can say, I want someone who can be used more than me, what is he expecting? What is he ex ex expecting? He cannot, I mean, someone who has all of them, nine, nine of them, nine gifts, nine. And he said, I want someone who can be raised more than I am. This man is humble. He's humble. Very humble. Very humble. Sometimes I want us to, let me close my Bible. God bless you. Sister, what do you want here? Because I'm still preaching. You are disturbing. Can you see that? Huh? What do you want? Speak very fast. I'm giving you a chance. How love I in love? Are you a demon? Eh? So you are a demon? So you are proud to be a demon? I'm proud. But Christians are not proud to be Christians. So you are proud to be a demon. Okay, explain to me. What makes you to be proud of being a demon? Interpret, Pastor. <laughs> Others, they are not hearing. She said she's proud for what she's doing. So she's proud to be a demon because whatever she wants happens. That's what she said. So how did you enter my sister? Okay, okay. Cut the story short. Explain. Oh. So the magade this waka mana e. Come, come here, come here. Come and stand here. Come and stand here and face people of God. Because you are not telling me, you are telling them. Okay? Cut the long story short. Oh, so go call me, sir. The Magaleta is not going to be a man. Oh, interpret. Speak in English now. You must, you must speak Tonga. Interpret. Tonga. English. Okay? Interpret. What are you saying? So, because I hate her mother so much. That I want her mother to suffer. Okay, speak in Shangan now. So Luzanda mana e nango fu mana e na van pora ila kulonu balanguta. Okay, okay, English. So I hate her mother in such a way that when I look at her, yes. I just want her to die. I even give her sickness so that oh, she can. Oh, 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 oh. You say you are proud of being a demon. Very proud. Why? Ah, because. I want to make a mother suffering and she's suffering. What more can I want? I'm very happy. So who appointed you to be a, a stupid demon like this? I appointed myself because that's how I was born. Oh, I you was born. Wait. Don't give me a chance. So you were born a demon. I was born a witch, not a demon. You don't understand this thing. Oh, oh there's a difference between a witch and a demon. What Please. is the difference? Because a demon yeah. is from the devil. And, the and witch. a witch. I was born in a family of witches. So they initiated uh, uh, me. Uh, uh, uh. Stop. 
What is the difference between a demon and a witch? A demon is from the devil. Yes, stop. Yes. A demon is from the devil. And a witch is from? You are born a witch. Your parents will give you, to you bear to you me. as the witch. So a demon is from Satan. And a witch is from? You are born a witch. Or I'm not sure how, but I was born this way. Oh, you were born this way? Yeah. So you don't want to change? For what? For Jesus. No. Why must? I'm making her suffer. I'm making the whole family suffer. They are all useless. Boys, girls, nothing is happening. Waking, not waking. Same thing. Okay. So I'm here. Wait for me. Remember, I'm interviewing you, so don't overtake me. Who are you? <laughs> so I married into the family. So I'm not sure how to call it, but the uh, father's brother married me, not knowing that I'm a witch. So when I go to the family... Yeah, you are really contradicting yourself. Okay, now, what have you done to this girl? I make her useless. How? She's very clever. She was supposed to be a municipal finance. She's, she's done a diploma in municipal finance. Okay. And before Okay, okay. So now, leave her. <laughs> no, I'm not going anywhere. Remember, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Leave her. I've been sitting in this child for the last 35, 31 years. The, oh, she's 31? Yeah, she's 31. Now, I'm taking one day, in fact, one minute to remove you. Come out. Where am I supposed to go now? You go where you choose to go. I'll have nothing to do. Because she's my mission, I'm always behind her. I feed her at night. Every night she'll pray, I feed her. She'll pray again, she'll feed her. Listen, I... leave her now, in Jesus' name. Out! I... No queen! Pamba! In Jesus' name. Go, leave the family. There's no more <laughs> negotiation now. I'm not negotiating, I'm telling you, go. One, two, three, out. In Jesus' mighty name. You are free. You are free, you are free, you are free. You are free, sister, rise up. Say, Holy Father, touch me now. And bless, me. and bless me. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit as, I'm you, as I'm humbling myself before you, lead me by your hand, by your hand to, my to my destiny in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit take, me by my hand take me by my hand to where I belong. To where I belong. As I humble myself, I want, I want to see you waking in my life. In, my life. In, the Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Clap hands and pray that prayer. Holy Father, I humble myself. Lead me through. I humble myself. Take me forward. I humble myself. Take me forward. I humble myself. I humble myself. Take me forward. I humble myself. Take me forward. I humble myself. Take me where you want me to be. Let me reach my destiny as I humble myself in Jesus' name. Let's all kneel as you are humbling ourselves in Jesus' name. Let's all kneel. Say, Holy Father, as I'm humbling myself, I do it for the glory of your name. And I want to produce what is in my heart. I want to produce humility. Say, Holy Father, I'll never answer for myself. But I will allow the Holy Spirit to speak for me. I surrender all in the name of Jesus.
pray that prayer and say, I'm humbling myself, Lord. I'm humbling myself, Lord, and I need you in my life. Pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity. We are humbling ourselves before the holy throne of God. We know that it's not possible for us to be lifted except when we can humble ourselves. You are ready to raise us, Lord, because we are humbling ourselves. We know that, Holy Father, you are always there for us. Father, I pray that you forgive us of our ignorance. We humble ourselves today. Mighty Jesus, for we need you. We need your hand upon our lives. We need your hand, Lord, your ability to be our ability. In the name of Jesus, pray and clap hands and thank him for he has done it. Thank you, Holy Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. We need to be fed by you, to be led by you, as you are humbling ourselves. We may stand on our feet and praise him. Stand on our feet and praise him now. Clap hands for him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Clap hands for him. Thank him for what he has done. Thank him for what he has done. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. In Jesus' name. Uh, I just heard that Prophet Sandile. Where are you, sir? Are you here? I heard about Prophet Sandile. I must give you this prophecy. Stop there, sir. God bless you. I heard that you, you'll, you'll start to travel also. And wherever you go, you must glorify the name of the Lord. Amen. Don't com compromise. Because sometimes you find that some others, they will invite you for money. Yeah. Don't agree to it. Go only when God tells you to go. Amen. If you don't feel like it, don't go. Even if they promise money, because it's like there are people who want to destroy the gift in your life. Amen. So because I'm seeing you traveling, going somewhere. Amen. So this grace of traveling has come to you. Receive it Amen. in Jesus' name. Take it now. Take it now in Jesus' name. You'll travel, but be careful. Don't just take any, any invitation. Amen. Check if the invitation will glorify the name of the Lord or not. Amen. Do you hear that? Amen. This is the grace for you, my brother. Shake my hand in Jesus' name. Receive it. Jesus name you are you are blessed you are blessed Can you tell us your name and where you come from the prophecy you received today and also confirm it uh, My name is Sandy Lemtembu uh, I'm based in Ranfontein I'm a pastor there I'm submitting no, under here in Charis no, 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 no. Uh, The prophecy I received from the man of God was that he sees an international ministry upon my life uh, the Lord uh, is going to be connecting me internationally, but I must not just accept any invitation that I receive. I must descend and follow the will of God concerning my life. And were you expecting him to tell you that about traveling? Yes, because uh, I think before he even spoke about it, when we, before he even spoke about it, as we were speaking about giving towards uh, that is traveling to USA, in my heart, I was crying that, Lord, as much as I knew that he was not around today, but I came, I just came to connect with the same grace of traveling. So for me, it was kind of like a breakthrough because sorry, it was in my heart. And how did you feel when he spoke to you about something that was planted already in your heart? I, I was so excited because even in the morning, I had been praying about that. So for me, I, was, I took it as a confirmation and I, was, I received the grace as he was speaking. And I'm believing God for a breakthrough. And I know it has happened because of the crazy and charis missionary church under Daddy and Mama in Jesus' name. Yes, I'm seeing someone inviting you also. Yes. Are you invited already? Because I'm seeing you going somewhere for, to preach. 
No, no, I'm not. You haven't got the invitation letter yet. No. I'm seeing you traveling. Thank you, Jesus. But it can also be a temptation. Because the moment someone say, come to my church and preach and do whatever. But these people don't agree now. Amen. Check first and pray. Amen. If it's possible, you can come and ask Mama or Daddy because this one, they can, they can misuse you. You find that they are misusing the gift. Amen. And, and from there, they attack you. This, it can be an attack. Receive the grace to conquer. Amen. Take it. In Jesus' mighty name. Receive. You are, you are blessed. You are blessed. And I heard, where is she? I heard about, you are worried about, like, your family. It's like, I don't know what is happening in your, in your father's it? house. I don't know. It's like you are praying too much. Are you the only one who is born again in your mother's Yes, in house. my mother's house, I'm the only one who's the only one following who, the true who is gospel. following the true gospel. Yes. Because I heard that you are worried about your, your mother's house. and Very you much. Pray, you are praying. This is the reason much. why all these spirits are coming to you to attack you. Yes. So, that they, so they can cancel this light. You are the light of the family. Amen. Touch your eyes. Rub your eyes. Rub your eyes. In Jesus' name. You are blessed. God bless you. God bless you. I'm only ministering by the grace of God. Remember, she's my sister in the Lord as she's uh, the, his daughter, like my brother there. Yes. Lift your hands and say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. touch me today. And bless, me. and bless me in Jesus name, name. why is like now I'm concentrating on one person I'm also hearing that you you receive a better car very soon I'm seeing a better car coming to you thank you Jesus thank you Jesus it's like I'm concentrating you, on Jesus. one person thank you Jesus receive it receive this oh, car will glorify God eh? oh, there are people who undermine oh my God God is lifting oh, this lady God is lifting oh, you, my sister. God is lifting you. Oh, God is lifting you. God is lifting you. God bless you. God bless. Clap hands for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. We may be seated. Can you tell us your name, where you come from, the prophecy you received today, and also confirm it? Um, my name is um, Pastor Sitlodi. I'm from Pretoria. The prophecy that I received was um, um, people are undermining me and uh, he's seeing the spirit that is fighting my mother, that I'm very worried about my mother. The spirit that is in her is attacking me. So he said, I'm the light of the family. And um, he also said that he's seeing me um, going out of the country and uh, he said I must be aware of the invitations every invitations that I received I must tell daddy and um, also that um, he said he's seeing the invitation At that time I had forgotten that I was invited yes I was invited I rejected the invitation um, I, I said that um, I believe I'm still small in spirit so now I'm when the right time comes I'll tell my father um, I rejected the invitation. And um, the other thing was um, God is going to give us uh, a, a, a better car. And um, yes. And the issue of you being the only person in your mother's side who follows Jesus, the true way of God, how did it affect you knowing that you're the only person and you're a servant of God as well and you want change in your family, but it was not happening? Uh, it had brought a lot of challenges in my life because I faced rejection in the family because of that, that why am I taking that way and not that other way? And um, I've also, they also th thought that um, I'm making myself to be better. So now, uh, also on the part of my mother, um, the, 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 the way it was affecting me, people were also talking that her mother is there, but she's there. What kind of a God is she preaching about? And um, it has affected me a lot because now I had to choose between God and my mother. 
and that brought a lot of challenges and people were asking themselves how is she winning us whereas her mother is not supporting her yes and were you aware that people are undermining you yes i was very um, um, aware and um recently even this week uh, I was receiving SMSs that um, we are going to attack the church. We are coming to you. You are not a true servant of God. We know that there is nothing that shall come out of you. Uh, nothing. Many things that you will remain poor. You don't have anything. So many people were saying those things. So I was just ignoring them. And the issue of traveling. Were you praying that God should send you out? Yes, yes. I'm... Um, I, I always say when I'm joking that ah, when you are looking for me, you'll find me in Australia. So this thing, I was saying it jokingly, but I, it was, it's my faith that I'm going to travel. So this thing, uh, when I was young, I used to see myself traveling. So I believe when he said that, even they do also said, I'm going to travel. We're going to travel with my husband. So yes, it was a confirmation and it was also our prayer that God may take us outside. And how do you feel for the mere fact that the man of God told you you would travel, uh, told you you're the lighter in the family, and also God is going to shame your enemies by also blessing you with a car, a better car. How do you feel? I, I feel so humbled because um, the thing that I was saying, kept on saying was, Lord, who am I that you are so mindful of? Who am I that you are so mindful of? I feel um, so blessed, the grace of God, you know, I, I'm, I'm humble, that's what I can say, I'm so humble. We give you, we give you, we give all glory, we worship you. I want us to sing this song very slow and listen to it. We give you all the Lord. We worship you our for you are worthy to Did we hear it? We give you honor, we give you all glory. We worship you, for you are worthy. We give. Let's change the song. It is the power of the power. The power of the 
You know, these songs, they are so beautiful when we see, we see them relaxed. You don't even rush. It is the power, the power, the power, the power, oh, the hope, it is the power, the power, the power, the power of the holy. It is the power, the power, the power, the power, the power, the power, oh, the whole. It is the power. This the power, the power, the power, the power, oh, the whole. Let's sing the song that Daddy loves so much. You know the one that he loves, the baby song. You, you remember the song? Yeah.
Thank you, Jesus. Amen.